welcome to QLab. In this video, we're going to have a look at the synthesis of iron sulfate. And we're going to be using a substitution reaction with copper sulfate and iron metal. If you want to follow along, everything you need is in the description box. And let's get started. Right, so what we're going to do today is try and make some iron sulfate. And it's going to be a slightly different reaction because we're not allowed, in the UK at least, we're not allowed sulfuric acid for home use. So I've got to use a um, substitution strategy. So I'm just going to put a bit of iron, just an excess of iron in there, plenty of it. In fact, if I put the stir on, We should, oh, don't splash the water around all over the place. That's no good, I'll go chuck a stirrer bar in there. So what we're going to do is add some copper sulphate to our reaction. Now this isn't terribly nice stuff, so you should do it really holding gloves. I'm going to wash my hands straight after and I'm just going to put a fair, fair quantity in. Now normally you'd make up your solution of copper sulphate and then add the iron to it. But I was intending to use the iron as a stirring rod, but there we go. All make mistakes. <laughs> you can see it's already beginning to react. You're getting the red copper deposit on the, uh, on the iron. So what we've got in here with this green coloured solution is dissolved up copper, uh, sorry, iron sulphate and the orange metal below, well that's copper, that orangey red metal. So, oh and this cloudiness, definitely has something in my copper sulphate which isn't very good. So I. We'll get some new stuff after I've used this lot up. But what we're going to do is filter this and collect the filtrate. You can see there, look at that. It's copper metal. Now what's interesting is it's actually plated onto often a lot of the iron. So it won't be just copper in there. But it's uh, it looks very impressive, doesn't it, to go from that black through to some nice red colour. lovely green if the camera will focus it's being absolutely hopeless a lovely green iron sulfate solution right well here's our filtered solution it's still a little bit murky which I'm not happy about at all but this is where a bit of the science comes in is I'm going to put a little bit of iron in with this. So we're going to reduce the volume. And I'm a bit concerned that when I heat it, um, we'll get Fe2+, plus, which is this lovely green solution, go to Fe3+. Plus. And I don't want that at all. 
So I want to see if we can get this iron to... It's sort of mixing, but it's definitely not stirring. But the important thing is that it's moving around a little bit. And then what we're going to do is start to reduce the volume by heating this a little bit. We'll take some off this, well, steam, because it's just water. we go that's filtered you can see there's plenty of yellow solid that's been captured Ooh. And we're still waiting for some of the filtrate just to come through and there's our liquid unfortunately there does still seem to be plenty of um, cloudiness in there. We'll see what that looks like after we've let it cool down. So as you can see it's still very cloudy. We've got that ferric sulfate, that iron 3 sulfate. So we're just going to filter it off and collect that iron 3 sulfate. And once we've rinsed as much, as, as much of it as we can through the filter paper or through this kitchen roll. Filter paper would be better, but you know, using what I've got in the kitchen. We'll then scrape out some of this and put it on a watch glass so that it can just dry off. We can get rid of all that water. And we should be left with some nice powdery iron 3 sulfate. So this is the precipitate from the um, sulfate, the iron sulfate reaction. You can see it's got a kind of yellowy colour. Oh, that's a bit scratchy. I've just let it dry out. That's why you can see this sort of patterning on it because it's literally the, the moisture has just dried out and left this lovely powder. And I believe this is actually basic ferric sulfate, so it's an adduct between ferric sulfate and iron oxide. You can see it's got this really nice colour, it's much, it's more of a yellow than a red. That's the thing I've really been enjoying about this iron chemistry, is all the colours we can get, because often chemistry, especially in organic synthesis, just ends up being white or yellow if things aren't working very well. But this is working very well, very nicely. We'll just collect that together. And that's another sample for our iron chemistry. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're enjoying these videos on iron chemistry. I'm finding really good fun exploring what we can do at home with some exciting chemistry. Anyway, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like the kind of videos we make here, why not subscribe? Because that helps the channel. Anyway, there'll be more coming in Iron Chemistry very soon. And I'll see you then. Bye.